Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be an adventure, drama, and sci-fi film from 2023 called War of the Worlds. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. The movie starts with a view of space as the camera moves closer to a red planet. Suddenly a rocket takes off from Mars, followed by more, forming a fleet heading towards Earth. The story then shifts to a regular forest on Earth during the night. Three friends, two guys, and a girl are biking through the woods. They are using a GPS to find where a meteorite supposedly landed. While looking for the meteorite, Herbert spots something odd in the bushes. Leaving his friends, he checks it out but finds nothing. His friends then startle him as they sneak up on him. They continue their search for the meteorite. When the GPS runs out of power, their friends decide to stay at Herbert's house nearby. As they leave, a mysterious creature with tentacles appears, shining green in the dark. The next morning, they learn from the news that a meteorite has indeed landed nearby. Excited, they ride their bikes to the site, finding it crowded with people. Hannah suggests they sneak around to the back of the meteorite to avoid the police. The police didn't secure the area, so the students went down to where the meteorite was. Without worrying about radiation, they reached out to touch it until OGV hurt his hand by touching the meteorite, which they filmed. They figured out it wasn't just a rock when it opened and revealed an alien resembling a mutant octopus inside. Hannah suggested they leave, but Herbert was captivated by the alien before it closed up again. As they were leaving, a police officer stopped them and made them wait for Dr. Stent, their school advisor, who wasn't surprised to see them there since they always show up whenever something from space lands. Herbert felt uneasy, thinking the visitors from the meteorite didn't seem friendly. Then, the meteorite opened again, and a giant creature with three legs and tentacles came out, shooting fire and causing people to run away in fear. The students, hiding, filmed the alien as it passed by them unnoticed. Riding their bikes back to town, they saw more capsules landing, signaled by trails of black smoke in the sky. Back home, they watched on telly as Air Force jets headed to confront the alien visitors, and a man claimed the falling rocks were divine retribution for human sins. Dr. Stint and military advised against trying to contact the aliens, saying trained professionals would handle it. The students tried to contact their families, but found the connections were down, leading Herbert to speculate that the invaders were from Mars. They decided to stay in and drink tea in a very British way. Later, Hannah spotted someone in the garden, who turned out to be a British soldier named Ben, seeking refuge. Ben, who had narrowly escaped an alien attack, told them the military was defeated. Despite wondering if the military could regain control, Ben advised them to flee. Herbert wanted to find his mother, proposing they use walkie-talkies for communication. Using the walkie-talkies, Ben contacted his superiors, who also urged them to escape as more alien invaders were landing. After stocking up on food, the students and the soldier ride their bikes and notice military jets in the sky. Ben gets in touch with the command center to check on the situation and learns that a powerful alien tripod is attacking the city outskirts with a deadly beam. Along their route, they encounter a military patrol that advises them against looking for their family members due to ongoing evacuations. The group reaches an evacuation center teeming with survivors. During registration, it's revealed that Herbert's last name is Wells, ironically linking him to the chaos. Ben pulls some strings to get them a spot on an evacuation boat. While on a boat, they witness a bird flock and then an alien tripod engaging in destruction, although it's eventually destroyed by the military. However, this celebration is short-lived as more alien machines approach, forcing everyone to flee. During the escape, Hannah falls and loses consciousness but is later carried to safety by her friends. They return to the boat and row towards London. Seeking refuge in the woods, they encounter a despondent preacher from the news who declares the invasion as the apocalypse in a divine retribution. His doom sermon annoys the group and Herbert asks for directions to avoid further religious debate. Despite their desire to leave, the preacher follows them, claiming he can offer salvation. Finding a house with hastily abandoned supplies, they begin to distribute the food. A disagreement between Ogilvy and the preacher escalates, leading the preacher to threaten them with a knife. In a scuffle to disarm him, Herbert is accidentally wounded. The preacher, unsure of what to do next, eventually lets Herbert go. OGV suggests they should leave, but the preacher insists they stay, 
claiming their destiny is yet to be determined. The group sits quietly around the table while the erratic preacher lights a candle. He offers Hannah some bread, making a comment about her being part of the weaker sex, and hinting at the need for repopulation. As they finish a second bottle of wine, Herbert questions the preacher's departure from Christian values. The preacher claims he's now even closer to God. When it's time for bed, the preacher warns them not to wake him or he'll enforce his own version of a commandment with a knife. The night is filled with tension. Herbert, eating water, keeps a weary eye on the sleeping preacher and tries to take his knife but is distracted by a noise outside. They see an alien tripod pass by their window. The preacher wakes up, brandishing the knife and ranting about divine retribution. Despite the group's pleas for him to stay away from the window, he continues, only to be abducted by an alien tentacle. After the alien leaves without finding the others, the group remains hidden and terrified. In the morning, they communicate with Ben over the radio and set out to meet him. Finally, reaching a familiar forest, they notice a reflective signal from a hilltop. Investigating, they find Ben, who has established a makeshift camp. Ben shares that the alien invasion is ongoing with human forces continually defeated. He suggests that humanity's best chance might lie in living underground. Herbert isn't in favor of hiding and wants to bravely fight against the invaders. To show the gravity of the situation nationwide, Ben gets in touch with his military friends who confirm the bleak circumstances everywhere. Meanwhile, in the woods, OGV tinkers with grenades and Hannah tries to uplift a disheartened Herbert. Motivated by the crisis, Herbert devises a plan to investigate the alien's motive for capturing humans. He persuades the group to embark on this risky journey towards the nearest alien landing site. As they approach London, they witness the terrifying sight of Martian tripods ravaging the city with a deadly beam. However, fueled by an unlikely optimism, the group stealthily navigates through the abandoned streets using monuments for cover. Their venture leads them close to one of the alien ships. Curious and cautious, Herbert and Hannah move in for a closer look to uncover what lies within. Under the safety of the trees, the duo observes the tripods transferring strange objects into the mothership, which seems to be filled with unusual eggs, indicating that the aliens might be setting up a nest. When Hannah relays what she's seen to Ben, OGV is suddenly captured by the aliens. Ben heroically attempts a rescue, shooting at the tripod, which retaliates by targeting him with its appendage. In a desperate move, the trapped soldier detonates a grenade, destroying the tripod and freeing OGV, who is then reunited with his friends. However, they have no time to grieve for Ben as another tripod starts pursuing them, forcing them to seek refuge under a bridge. Inside the sewers, there's a disagreement about how long they should stay hidden, with OGV particularly adverse to the idea of staying there indefinitely. Anna quickly stops the argument. Emerging the next day, they find a scary silence with no sign of the tripods. They come across a patch of the mysterious red grass, now seeming to die, and a lifeless alien resembling the one they saw earlier. They cautiously approach the alien, throwing rocks at it to ensure it's dead, and notice a nearby tripod that the creature had exited from before meeting its end. Suddenly, Dr. Stent appears unexpectedly with the military and reveals that the alien invaders succumbed to Earth's viruses and bacteria, which their immune systems couldn't withstand. Amidst this, Herbert receives a radio call informing him that his mother has been rescued and will be sent home. The relieved and jubilant friends drive away. The film concludes with a tense moment as a tentacle emerges from one of the eggs, leaving the audience with a thrilling end. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.